I just think there's a lot of parallels between Vi- Video Drum and Thirty Rock. Yeah, mm. and I, I think uh, Video Drum and Thirty Rock. Uh, like, imagine if the people who worked for Video Drum were like. 30 rock and it's like oh gosh i'm just trying to make this show that turns everybody into our slaves i'm just but i want to have a baby can't i just have it all (laughs) i am picturing liz lemon as uh what's his name in the movie just like james woods james woods yeah i was thinking it was like a kenneth parcel type of (laughs) character it's very like i love television (laughs) television's where wonderful things happen wonderful things happen I don't know. I'm just, I think if James Wood's character had been more like Kenneth, I don't know. This was a messy start. There's a pretty opposite on the spectrum, a very jaded porn producer and then like a wide-eyed intern who loves every aspect of the business. Yeah. Well, I thought James Woods got kind of wide-eyed at one point. Ha, 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 ha. (laughs) <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, Chelsea. What? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, um. What? Mm, I forgot. Do you remember? Is it a breath of fresh movie? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. He said it. He said it. Say, oh. it. say it louder. A breath of fresh movie. To a breath of fresh movie. This is a podcast where I, Victoria Harley, and I'm Chelsea Pope. We watch a movie that neither one of us has ever seen, and then we talk about it. Uh, and this week, somebody else is watching and talking with us. Yeah. Introduce yourself, sir. Who are you? Hi, I'm Mike Sally Farber. Oh, okay. Sally came to dri- uh, join us for this week's episode, which is. Oh, sorry. We all let's say it together. Video drum. Wow. That sounded cool because he has such a low voice mm. that had like the it had a vibe. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Like the dial tone. I think I should be on this podcast just for timber reasons. For yes. timber reasons. Yeah, just to as a certain up. gravitas. Yes. Yeah. All right. Maybe. I, I have a pun. If you are. Yeah, ready. yeah, yeah. Ready. When in Videodrome, do as the Videodromans do. Yeah. Oh, ha 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 mm-hmm. ha. It's bad. When in Videodrome, do as the Videodromans do. Yes. That's, yeah, there's something there. There should be an entire sketch comedy show that's just specifically video <laughs> yeah. drum sketches. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pitch it to the pack. I think that's a solid idea. I would totally do like a full length sketch show based on video drum. I would just submit a monologue about how much I hate James Woods. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fair. I would let, you know what? I'm going to produce this show and people are going to be I like, oh, vid- video drum. Why that? And then it's why like, why not? Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah, what were your, uh, everybody, what were your first impressions of this movie? I mean, what did you know before you went in, first of all? Well, I knew it was Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. I had even heard certain catchphrases or that I was reminded of like, long live the new flesh. And I was like, oh, that's why people say that. Okay. Mm. But other than that, I knew very little. I felt, uh, well, I'd seen The Fly. I'd seen, uh, yeah, I'd mm. seen his rendition of The Fly and also Crimes of the Future uh, came, uh, premiered at, at the Cannes Film Festival. Con. Oh. No, and Con. And uh, seeing, you know, some some twitterings about that, uh, I, I, twitterings. I, you know, whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't, words. No, no, those? you're right. Cron- uh, Cronenberg's in, um, in the zeitgeist again. He's in the zeitgeist. So I, That's like, hit, like, Victoria and I were talking and it's just like, oh, what are some of, like, his seminal things, you know, like yeah. what could be. I'm going to blame it on you. I feel like this was your idea. That's no, please. <laughs> I, I low key was like, no, but I, I take, I take the onus. No, no. I'm glad you suggested it because it's one of those movies that what I just knew was it's really weird. I'm like, glad. I'm, weird. I am glad that I watched it. Yeah. Like and, I, you know. Yeah. And like, I, I found, oh. yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah. I found it pretty interesting. I'm not going to say like I loved it, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of concepts in that movie I didn't hate. Yeah. And it was short. It was so we, sweet. Is, yeah. It, it went, it, it moved, it, it's, it's around the same length as Bubba Hotep, which yeah. is our previous episode. Yep. But don't, it moves. They don't make them like they used to. 
Like, like this is gonna sound messed up for, of me no, to say, sorry. but out the gate, I'm just gonna let you know. No, I did not like Videodrome, but <laughs> I would give it a higher star rating than Bubba, Bubba Hotep. Hotep. Yeah. Um, but I liked Bubba Hotep more. Yeah. Like it was more. Yeah. Endearing. I connected with it more. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this, this is was, certainly this a more alien. interesting. This was very alienating for me. Yeah. Like, I, Understandable. I didn't care about any character in this hmm. uh, mm-hmm. for like a second, really. I was just like, every, no, it's like, a very deliberately like he has a dry. T- I guess we should probably say what the synopsis oh, yeah. is or the, yeah, sorry, yeah. the log line thing what is before. I, would, I don't know if I did. I mean, I don't think we have. I didn't actually. We didn't know. We definitely didn't say it. and I didn't write it down this week. But I can just say it's about a guy who runs a UHF station, kind of like UHF. Yeah. Uh, I thought that Pair was this with UHF. Pair this with UHF. Um, this guy, there's a pornographer who works at a station, and he's, you know, of course, trying to find what's the new thing, what's the next big thing. He's in media. That's what we're always mm-hmm. doing, right? What can we get our audience? And he has a pirate friend who finds the signal that is broadcasting this really intense sort of S&M torture porn. And he's mm-hmm. completely captivated by it and decides this is the next big thing. He's a fucking freak. No yeah. <laughs> and this torture porn channel signal he's is... supposed to represent all of us. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our insatiable desire to, to, to <laughs> have up the ante. Exactly. No, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. But uh, Nasty. Th- the channel's called Videodrome. So yeah. there's our title. Um, and, you know, he has this pirate friend, like, record tapes of it, seemingly. Although mm-hmm. this all unravels later in the plot. Uh, which that's the other thing we will spoil the plot so just you know <laughs> yeah we're, we won't cover everything or maybe we will maybe but we will. but we're gonna cover anything yeah. i mean would you say that's essentially the, the log line it's about this guy's like i mean it gets dark it gets stranger than that that's just like how it's yeah essentially yeah. yeah he gets introduced to this new kind of porn that he wants to put on and then he very quickly gets in involved in it's it's becomes very conspiratorial he goes mm-hmm. down the spiral mm-hmm. and initially trying to acquire this content and then i don't know and it, there was a little bit of a little bit of a layover of the you know there's there's a Joel Schumacher movie that has like oh it's called eight millimeter and there's oh, and I it's totally about, remember that movie yeah, yeah it's about like snuff movies yeah. and this mm-hmm. reminded me of like if Cronenberg made that movie basically yeah even no. though that's going at it from a different angle because it's like someone's daughter just it's they're going at it more like detective style versus yeah, this like, is strictly just a, a a TV guy trying to like voyeur yeah yeah a TV to. voyeur this you is, know yeah this is definitely like a critique of the media. Like, mm-hmm. that was pretty obvious. Yeah. You know, yeah. actually, they're really different movies. I shouldn't say that. They're yeah. so different. No, no, no. But you know but what? <laughs> they, I guess because they both have snuff and it's like well, they're, they're, they watch a tape and then trying to find the tape leads them into this. That, that I think, is exactly where the similarity yeah. is. Yeah. Because I, I know just what you mean. It begins as this sort of surface level thing and then it gets more complicated and strange. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe totally. I'm just thinking eight mile. No, it was eight no, millimeter. No, okay. With, <laughs> or nine uh, millimeter. Nicholas I don't Cage, know. Right? No, yeah. Yeah, Nicholas yeah, yeah. Nicholas I Cage and it, Joaquin Phoenix had a small role in it. I know mm. that. Um, yeah. I think he worked at the porn stores. He did. No, he was a cutie. And then I he know. has like a really fucked up death. Oh yes, sorry, he does. we spoiled eight millimeter. It is a movie about snuff films, so I feel like there is gonna somebody has to die, right? Yeah. Uh, I thought the theme of the movie was be careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> this is very, well, I learned a lesson today. Yep. Womp, womp. Womp, I mean, womp. I think like I, before we watched this, I was like, I have seen Cronenberg and I was like, I don't like body horror. It's just kind of like where I started. Sure. And I actually didn't know that. Yeah. I'm not, or I'm, it's not that I don't like it. It's just, I'm, I, I did some research to try to like better understand it. And Cronenberg yeah. is like a, he's not the first one to do it, but he is like a cornerstone of the genre. He's in that si- boom simply, of it. Simply because he's been doing it. There's not a lot of competition. Um, yeah. And when I consider what body horror could be, yeah, I actually feel like in theory it's really cool. It's just in this particular practice, I'm just not thrilled with it. But mm-hmm. I know that people worship at the altar of Rick Baker, Mm-hmm. The special effects guy who's yeah. on this movie. And I do think... He did a good job. I mean, he did a really good job. The pulsating Betamax tape. Yeah. And the, by the way, those are Betamax because it would have been VHS, but it wasn't... Um, it was too big to fit into the, the slit uh, they made. For, oh, so they, did, they went yeah, Beta. Go, oh, yeah. wow. Well, I, I couldn't tell. 
That was actually I, I, my yeah. my favorite. I think image from all the movies is the 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 Betamax looks sick and gross and revolting and flesh. I think that's that's really it's a really it's good really cool the way effect. they pull off yeah. how how real and disgusting that that no you totally. know so, and some of it's like it's there is the there is some campy stuff but it's like what separates it from being silly to grotesque like there's that 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 arena is where it's playing and where it's so absurd and over the top, like the TV when like I'm laughing as it's like getting like basically going, getting hard. Like there's veins on top. <laughs> yeah. There's like yeah. dick veins on top yeah. of the I said, TV. I wrote that exact thing down. I said then dick the, veins. Yeah. Dick on veins the on the TV. <laughs> yeah. That was definitely a moment. I really liked how it's like, it's so obviously scary and disgusting, but he's such a nasty boy and he just like puts his hand on it and strokes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh, okay. He's, he's, he's he'll, he'll have it all. You know, <laughs> he's like the so you can have it all. It's like you get the dick, dick on top, yeah. titty, titty screen, mm-hmm. titty, it's, titty ass. It, I don't. It looked more like he was eating ass, I guess, when he like dips his head into the TV. Oh, right, right. We're really jumping around. No, here. no. Yeah. Basically, reality and and perception and TV manipulating that. That's like the main. The, the think of that stuff. It's, and that's what this it's is. It's about man as a technological animal. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like in our relationship to technology. And, yes. and one of the phrases that's repeated a few times by one of the theorists in the in the plot of the movie mm-hmm. is that the television screen is the retina of the mind's eye. Yes. Right. It's, a, it's a, the idea is the pre, well, your perception creates your your reality. And so it's we never Which, actually see a true distinction of what's real. And everything is through his point of view. By the way, I never did. They repeat that several times in the movie. And I never did figure what like the retina is the nerve that captures an image so how does like how i didn't quite connect the metaphor of what how is the tv yeah. a retina because yeah. it's more like it's showing you something not like i, I guess a retina focus doesn't. on the mind's eye part of it probably you know just yeah. maybe it's just see I, I i guess i don't know maybe it's not a literal it doesn't translate literally perfectly but it does evoke yeah. the idea that what you see is what you project back I yeah. see. Yeah. What you what you're consuming yeah. is what what you what you take in yeah. is what you put out. Mm. Is a very seems a very direct. This is starting to remind me of film school, where I would read theory, and it would just be like the mind film of the film mind is yes. where the <laughs> user exactly. experiences the. And it's it's all, like, yeah, oh. it's a movie. Oh. It's a movie about about media. So you know, it's it's you know. I thought it was. Yeah, I liked it. I thought. Yeah. Its themes were. Nice. Or I, I, liked a lot <laughs> I thought of, it was nice. <laughs> I'm with you that like James yeah. Woods, you almost want to hate him the whole time. I think that was he's, kind of the casting. Not, the I don't time. think you're supposed to like no. him. But there's something about his face. I'm just like, I just want to punch it. He himself looks like a Cronenberg creation. <laughs> <laughs> he has these very exaggerated features. And I hate to be a dick, but it looks like, like some acne scarring or what have you, you know. Sure. So no. there's texture. The chin, the shape. He's got very yeah. big, bold features. But then it's like it count. He counteracts. You counteract those kinds of features with like the things that do that do work for him, which is like like exceptional charisma. When the, the very little we got to see of it, the the James Woods humor. You know, he's a, com- he's a comedian actor. You know, and he has that. That he has a quality. Yeah. He has a qual. I'm not saying you know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but certainly that's supposed to. You're supposed to see that that is part of that character, at least in that interview section, for instance, when he's being like, you know, oh, you're wearing a red Small. dress, blah blah blah. Well, yeah, yeah. actually, I do think I'm doing a good. You know, he has that. He has yes. that very Smart like it that, sells yeah. that. Oh yeah, he persi- was like a little bit persona. Larry Flint in that moment. Yeah, like, kind of being the pornographer on TV who. You're all the hypocrites. Exactly. I'm He's doing that yeah. reverse sort of yeah. like, I'm not the problem. I'm the solution. Oh, yeah. Like, exactly. that's it. I mean, and he does actually a good job in presenting that. Like, it, it is sort of a very on the nose type of like scene where everything is just the ideas of things are just very clearly being stated. Like, this is a movie about what is more, like the moral implications of what this and that yeah. is. It's very much spelling out. It did have a lot of statey stuff. Yeah. You know, less, yeah. Like, statement y type things. And I mean, and I'm not, I don't expect it to be. Things don't always have to be like um, perfectly poetic, but you know, yeah. there's like, 
character, what is it? Is it Brian or Patrick Oblivion? Oblivion, yeah. 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 Very on the nose stuff but, is happening. But then, and it's we learned, like, but then we learned that that is like a sort of, not stage name, but really like a screen name. I mean, yeah. I think what was really, when we were watching it, because mm-hmm. uh, we watched this together, and we really noticed that it was like, oh, wow, like, they got a lot of things right in terms of like people being represented by video. Yeah. Right. What they got wrong was like just the physical hardware of it. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. they didn't, it wasn't, internet isn't part of this. So it's TV, TV, TV. Yeah. Right. It, it takes place in a future where they have this like broadcasting network that is essentially the internet, but it's. It lacks it's, the it's forethought like of 30 Rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It lacks because Kenneth yeah. would never have gone down this road because he knew that networks were going to disappear. Yes, he did. He's like, oh, NBC won't be here in five years, but whatever is here. <laughs> Earlier, <laughs> when you were calling him a Cronenberg creature with his face, which they definitely didn't put makeup on for certain, like to show him getting worse, I think. Yeah. I thought you were going to say he has this face combined with this like wiry frame of like a Seinfeld body. He's got like the jacket. He does have like a, he had a Seinfeld body. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. he definitely Even, did. Yeah. He wears that brown jacket almost the entire movie. I think that yeah, like suede yeah. thing. And... No, he, we were noticing that we're like, oh, he's actually got this very like slender, yeah. lean little he frame. He very much came off like the type of guy who, yeah, like he like very clearly sets the picture of like. Like he, he, like the kind of dude who would go like Lee Harvey Oswald, you know, or is it Harvey totally. Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald? Lee Harvey, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. there's very much that vibe of like, oh yeah, this guy's gonna, he's he's gonna, you know, shoot some people. Like he he could go off this yeah. guy, this guy's got some swagger, but if he lost a marble or two, he could go off the deep end real quick. Like yeah, I can't remember. In I'm fact, ho- he kind of did. And you said, yeah, he he did. what do you know? And I, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to. I'm gonna. It's but, very networky. It was like it reminds me a lot. This movie is network. very like oh, network, no. but like. But different, like more, pervy. and then way pervier. Like, yeah. oh my god, yeah. super pervy. Network. I mean, it's like right. We we have this. It's about a pornographer. I know, right? We're yeah. gonna see something. Okay, that's fine. But like, there's that sex scene, which, by the way, it's like 16 minutes into the movie, and he's fucking Debbie Harry, and he's pushing that fucking. He's like piercing her ears, basically. Yeah, oh, he's like yeah. pushing that needle or whatever the hell into in and out of her earlobe, and it was just. I, I was like yeah, screaming shit, at yeah. the screen, like, "Why?" Yeah. <laughs> like, I just did. and it's it's it's. I guess it was I beyond male gaze. It was oh like, yeah, like oh a, a hot female masochist who mm-hmm. wants to be brutalized. Yeah. Like, what a fucking male fantasy! And right? Just like, no, she's not a developed character by no. any stretch, and it is actually. I found that comical how she is initially presented as this, you know potential antagonist turn lover like premise is being established here but they just get right to it he just turns to her and is like i'd love to take you out you look great and then she's like yeah sure like she's just like yeah <laughs> no I'm resistance into- like yeah you know he says the thing about her dress and she's like yeah i want yeah i i i'm uh, i'm a highly charged person like yeah yeah I w- basically she's like yeah i want to fuck like let's go and then like then she's then immediately she's like oh it cut cut into my neck and then and then it's funny it, it's fucked up maybe that i think it's funny no, no. but it's, it's again fine. it's like the overall like there's just there's no pathos in this movie whatsoever you know so it's like understandably like you saying Victoria you didn't connect with it's like that <laughs> I, I'm right there with you like you know you see a girl and she's it's, this is your first night hanging out and dating her and she's like she, you know she she comes over and right away she's got any porn she's immediately looking through his porn collection and then she sits down she's like ah oh, give me give me some can you just cut me a little bit on the shoulder or whatever and you mm-hmm. see a bunch of little cut marks there and he's and James was just like huh looks like someone beat me to it <laughs> it's just so like yeah. it, it, it that you can't it's like i can't um it's un- it, it is this movie that was more unbelievable than the belly slit that could <laughs> right. take in the videotape if, it's, if, if nothing else it's like a, you know female conscious or fe- or feminist leaning viewers you know do beware that this character <laughs> that debbie harry is playing deborah harry i should say is very clearly signaled from the get as a as a um disposable object in a puppet um the, like very 
clearly um she's not meant you you should not uh you're not meant to have an emotional attachment to her no um because she's, she's not, gonna, not doing it she's cause... not gonna she's not gonna go be around no. for very long she in pretty this much leaves and then gets killed i mean most... and then it's just it's literally just a figure uh, an object a figure in yes. his mind a, yeah. a lust object like that yeah. is all he truly the she is right 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 pretty much from the well, get see, that's the thing i have some questions like i by the end of the movie was like wait was she ever real yeah, no, you just, it does. She was yeah. real, right? That's like, one of the things I do she, like about the movie is the ambiguity of the reality. It does serve as a very good dreamlike piece of what is true. actually very going dream-like. on. And they're literally on a set, so there's there's all this. They're literally already in a show in yes. that scene where they meet. So who's to say how much of this is real or yeah. for, pra- and they, fabricated? And they're telling him that you've received this. You've, you're the only one who's seen it. Like, none of us have watched it because yeah, it'll ruin yeah. us. It'll ruin our brain. Because the whole premise is that, like, that somehow, um, like, a certain signal can be sent to the brain yeah. when the brain is stimulated with something really intense. Yeah. So in this case, pornography. Um, in this particularly intense brand of, like, torture porn. Um, and that, like, somehow that creates, like, the right chemical state in the mind for you to receive the signal. And that, like, sci-fi element of it, I wasn't totally shut off to. Like, I yeah, thought, I like that. Yeah. Even, even if that's sort of, like, scientists were, you know, rolling their eyes, and like, that's not realistic. It's still, like, it had an interesting, like, metaphysical poetry to it. Or, yeah. or kind of a metaphysical, not poetry, but maybe just the, 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 the new way we can all be exploited and manipulated. And I like that the movie makes you think about that stuff. I like right. that for like two reasons. One, it's kind of hinting what people always say about the boob tube, that it's ruining your brain. And it was kind of taking it more literally. That like, what if they could literally Manchurian candidate you through the television screen yeah. if they wanted? And that's kind of interesting. It's also kind of interesting because from film school, I remember learning like on a film strip, they print audio on it. So there are hidden signals. Mm-hmm. If you know technically what video is, they like they hide all kinds of like information, time code, I.O. Mm-hmm. All this stuff is like buried under there. And of course, Cronenberg knew that. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like, what if they just hid one more track that was makes you go insane and hallucinate? That's interesting. No, the, like the physical connection that, that yeah, and then very much of this time too, because like, that was the other thing when we were watching it. it was like, oh, it, it wasn't until we got to the very end that I was like, oh, it was in Toronto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why it's all gray all the time. <laughs> I, like, I love that. Like, I love the idea of watching this movie in silence and then just like once he runs Toronto. into Toronto. Yeah, he's running into that shed off of the shore, the, the bay, and then all this, yeah. Oh, I didn't know this was in Toronto. Yeah, I mean, and they, oh, they, showed, in Toronto. they showed plenty of buildings that, like, I just don't know Toronto. Yeah. I don't know either. I same. I mean, it, it was it had that. Uh, it it certainly <laughs> came off like it could exist anywhere. Yeah, I you think know, that was a little bit of that. And, and I think also maybe that's what happens when you're a Canadian filmmaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah, like yeah. you have to hope that people will mistake it for America. Right. Maybe. Well, I, mean, I certainly I I, I would have assumed, assumed it, it was like Philly or something. Well, yeah, not some Philly, other place like that. Yeah, Pittsburgh is where the signal is coming from. But I, or L. A. You know, I don't even know. I wasn't really paying attention. Even though Somewhere East cloudy. Coast is what I was imagining. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't have any strong yeah. I, associations I, with it. I do have some information kind of about where this idea came from for Cronenberg. I guess when he was just speaking of Canada and U.S. and the divide, when he was a little kid, uh, I guess when the Canadian stations would go off the air, because that used to happen, by the way. There was mm-hmm. never like 24-hour programming. Uh, he would pick up signals from Buffalo like mm. late at night. Huh. And he started to wonder about like, what if he saw something he wasn't supposed to see? Oh. Or what if he saw a secret? Right. So he's had this idea kicking around his head since he was a kid. And I just, that's always kind of interesting, you know? That's fascinating. It's a very, like, this is a very sort of bygone, even though this was supposed to be a futuristic story, like it that had, idea of the signals. It's and it so almost analog. Feels like that, that, yeah, it's super analog. It's so like There's warm. something like, oh, <laughs> uh, I miss that time uh, yeah. in, in history where we could have switched to a station that like, well, you know, I'm even, even oh, I'm, it was oh, sorry. Full of I mean, that, that Oblivion guy who recorded all those oh, tapes yeah. of himself. I'm like, yeah, that's like somebody's like whole Instagram history. Yeah. It's like yeah. all their videos, except it's physical and it's on a shelf here. You yeah, know? yeah. it's just they wild. were so close and yet so far with so many things. And even I was going to say this, even like the kink in it is kind of quaint. Right, like the oh, fake, sure. the fake pop psychology about you're wearing a red dress. You know what that means? It exactly, like, it means I didn't choose the green one. You know, it yeah, doesn't no, mean it's anything. all very silly. No, but what's funny too, and again, it also plays into the argument that like how much of any of this is real is the fact that she is this perceived antagonist figure. But then she's right away like, 
No, it's because I, I want to be perceived. No, yeah, I'm very stimulated. <laughs> I'm very sexually charged. And yeah, yeah, I would like to go out for a drink with you. Where's your porn? Like, you I know. mean, I'm just like, did any woman read this script? <laughs> like before? No. <laughs> um, I don't. I, but Cronenberg barely read the script. They were having to like he, yeah, do things he, day of the shoot with. Yeah, this. yeah. Apparently, well, that's the thing. This again was an idea he continued to iterate. I guess he had an early treatment about a private TV network that the rich would subscribe to that mm. showed bizarre things. So very similar. Hmm. That was for called Network of Blood. It was never made. He also Squid did Game. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh wow. Um, yeah. He also did a CBC episode of a show called Peep Show, not to be confused with that British show, Peep mm-hmm. Show, um, where a fictional TV station called Civic TV, which was modeled on a real station called City TV that was known for broadcasting porn on late night blocks. Mm. So he's, again, he's been kicking these ideas around for a while. Yeah. And then he made Scanners in 81, and it really, like, put him on the map. I mean, he had made films before that, but Scanners was a really big hit. It was, it had a budget, you know, and it, it showed what he could do. Yeah. So he was established. Um, he was actually offered the directing job for Return of the Jedi. Oh, my God. He turned it down. I can't even imagine what the Ewoks would be. I know, right? It would be fascinating. (laughs) It would be fascinating if he would. I mean, that's wild, right? Like, who else was considered for that job, I wonder? Like, I don't know, but going from from George Lucas then to was it Spielberg right in the second one yeah. and I think then, it was Ka- oh, no it was no. Kasdan oh right? shit Florence Kasdan right never mind I don't know you know better than I'm I I'm pretty do. sure it's Kasdan just kidding I don't uh, everyone's gonna it. chew me out when I'm <laughs> well anyway he turned that down basically because he didn't want to direct somebody else's writing like yeah. that's, that was generally why he wanted to keep doing his own thing. So he starts writing the first that's draft of Video Drum in 1981, and he was like, uh, "I think this is too violent for anyone to ever let me make this." <laughs> um, it still got approved. It got the money. Um, there were a lot of changes. To get back to your point, Chelsea, there yeah. were a lot of changes, both pre-production, in production, mm. post-production. A lot of yeah. changes. There were three different endings filmed. I mean, oh wow, there were yeah. This was a story that was. I mean, really has been a lifelong iterative and collaborative process for Cronenberg. Yeah. Even though this was not my cup of tea, I appreciate that like this is something he's been thinking about his whole life. Right. You know? And the fact that they turned down like this big franchise thing because no, I want to do my stories. Yeah. Respect. Like I, I respect somebody who does who turns down Star yeah. Wars. Like I'm like, well done. That's a big deal. I'm, yeah. You no, know, I'm kinda curious why it had to even be in the future. In terms of, I don't of know like, that it was a video drum. Yeah. yeah, I kind of felt like it was present day. It was with just this one tweak. I feel mm-hmm. like it was in it was in another universe where like porn is playable on TV. Maybe it is in Canada, like we it learned. It is. I mean, like we I, learned. But it, it felt like a it felt like another world where like oh no, porn is acceptable media, and we're all craving media. So it that's why it felt futuristic to me. Is like I see that. it's moved beyond our politics yeah. of the day into like like the way you could say shit on TV now. Yeah, and, yeah. we mm-hmm. give everybody what they want, and that is th- that is the land we live in, right? Right. Right. Yeah, I definitely got, I, I just perceived it as like, yeah, like a Black Mirror alter, alternative reality. Totally. So there's certain things I just like, I'm suspending disbelief in the moment and like mm-hmm. knowing that this was made before like the internet and that this doesn't really take the internet into account no, again, in any way. Like just what you were saying earlier, like yeah, it gets a lot of things right and some things really, really wrong. Right, yeah. It's, it's, it's not a predictive text in that sense. No, definitely not predictive. But, but the, it, in it, certain it, ways, yeah. I yeah. think it does get, a lot of the times it gets the behavior right. The, like with the Brian Oblivion, the, that is obviously a fake name that I use on, you know, the screen. Oh, sure. Yeah, the screen name. Screen name. Yeah. yeah, screen <laughs> name. Having yeah. avatars. Yeah. But even like it seemed to carry a lot about blogging and internet without actually being about that. I, mm-hmm. I think well, it was like I said. I think it was very close, but then like just way off. Well, that, you know, like, it's, Betamax it's or, funny. Like I think maybe it's like that. It's that signal concept yeah. that mm-hmm. like that analog signal, the UHF stations, the like edges of the frequency, and like if you had a good enough antenna, maybe you could pick up something. And I think. It's not the internet, but there there was a lot of like like people were into ham radio and stuff for a reason. Like you right. know, people like communicating in this other way or finding this other. It's like people who listen to like the CB radios, yeah, uh, or police scanners. It's like, I mean, it's not all exactly the same, but I, I think there's like kind of this. There's this, and inha- we've always been coming up with ways of of fulfilling this. I guess is right. what I'm saying. Um, it was like an interesting mixed media thing in mm-hmm. that. 
it's a film, but it's a film about videos. Yeah. So we have a lot of video sequences that had to also be filmed for this movie, right? right. Like there was the, um, well, all the Oblivion stuff. Right. Uh, all the Videodrome stuff. The Samurai Dreams, like, porn right. that they show. And that, oh, yeah. that Roman one that they showed, too. Mm-hmm. It's like they had... Winning that... Drome. When in, yeah. Do it. When in Drome, do as the Dromans do. Um, but they were all filmed on Hitachi SK-91. I don't know what that means, but that's what they were filmed yeah, on. I know what they're, a Hitachi they're wand a, is. Yeah, I was going to say. No. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yes. Is that really? <laughs> yeah. What? Nothing. Never mind. Uh, Victoria doesn't know the reference. I don't know. Hitachi wands are like the big white vibrators oh, that you see, and like especially oh, well, yeah. in a lot of like most like porn videos, that's the type oh, of vibrator the girls are using. This giant oh, okay. fucking like yes. okay thing. I Not guess. usually like the little guys that like right. normal people usually. No, have. right, right, right. Okay. Now I guess if you pay, I didn't they're, they're, know like, that, like Hitachi's know, are attainable. I didn't they're know not, like, Hitachi not, was like only normal. like this is the only word association that I was. They make generators and all size. There's no normal vibrator. You can have any kind of vibrator, (laughs) big or small. I'm just saying, mine is not that big because discretion. It's I don't want to have to. You know, Hitachi wand. You just got a cord. I'm just just saying, like, or do they have cordless ones? Is it like Yamaha, where they make guitars and cars and pianos? Like Hitachi makes cameras and giant vibrators and you know these other things. Yeah, like video equipment, right? Am I wrong? Sure. Is it no, one of those companies? You're, okay. you're right. No, yes. you're right. I mean, you're I'm not just wrong. trying to make sure. Yes. I just get I'm really tickled by you we're already are. talking about a very sexual movie and then Hitachi, Hitachi came is up. just funny. You're it's right. Like, that's what I that's ha, ha, ha. I'm okay. Ha ha ha. I'm okay now. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of more sexual stuff, the T V screen effect, you know, with the uh the pulsating. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um that breathing TV was created, like Rick Baker came up with this. Uh, air compressor system and these valves that were hooked up to a piano keyboard. So he yeah. would play this oh, keyboard fine. to like press air in at different rates and different places. The screen is from the inside, it's rear projected from the yeah. inside. It was initially they were gonna use a weather balloon. They ended up figure that out. they ended up using dental dam. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Whoa, it that big? A really big sheet of Dental dam. Okay. The same material. Yeah. That's really funny. Which, I mean, it's kind of perfect for this sub- yeah. movie, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. God. They got I mean, the texture right. I mean, it really does look like... I like, feel like someone should use one of those ever in history, and this might have been the one time That's it was, really funny. You know? I, remember, I remember the first time I heard about Dental Dam, and I was just like, what? <laughs> I just like pretended to know, you know. This is a fascinating movie. No, I mean that's the thing. I, it's I, not. It's not an enjoyable watch. No. Like it's not. A f- it's not fun. I I was happy unless you watch things ironically, like I do in a <laughs> fucked up way, and you laugh when the when the guy doesn't react to her cuts. Like that's so. I know that was really weird. And well, then like she someone else that, beat me to she it. She puts that cigarette out and underneath her tit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there were just a lot of. That's part I of like the whole. Porn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, I feel like. I don't it's very know. matter of fact. Maybe audiences at the time weren't ready, but I know that like people had to be doing weirder stuff than this movie show. And they oh, were just sure. like, here's how weird it is. We can't show you anything really that weird, but you get what we're, you know, yeah, going, we're for. going for. It. No, you're it's right. pain and it's wrong and it's bad, but you love it. You know? Well, that's what Crimes of the Future is oh. Cronenberg coming back and correcting. No, <laughs> no, but I do like the idea. It's like, oh, this, this is the fucked up way. Like he could, he couldn't go so hard before i don't know yeah no i'm i'm with you i mean as much as there were moments where i was just like again i i I think i don't know when i said like i don't like body horror i'm realizing that's like not the truth it's just that like this is such a like one dude's kind of vision of body horror and like i say i mean i as i like learned a little more about it really frankenstein is kind of like the original body horror Hmm. you know it's a man sewn together of parts Mm -hmm. like and really like in general, body horror is one of the genres of excess, yeah. which includes something like pornography, melodrama, and then this kind of stuff. Because like this is all about, I don't know, they, they were talking about how it's really about biology, and it's about like our inherent fear of losing control. Yeah. And uh, that like we're reacting to some kind of stimulus, 
and that violates us or distorts our body in some way. But when we were talking about it, I was like, I think guys like body horror because like they can't give birth. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, like, oh, you want something, you want to think about what it's like to have something rip out of you and like leave you bloody and pained and like, you know, it's going to make your feet grow and your, I mean, it's just like women go, I mean, people, people too, other people, but but women who get pregnant, you know, can go through all kinds of body horror. And that's, again, not the only example, sure. but I, I just think there's, it's interesting that a lot of men, not all, but I notice a lot of men seem to really like body horror stuff, mm. you know, and it because it's it makes you squirm in your seat. And I did yeah. squirm. I did have a reaction, like a visceral reaction sure. that I couldn't control. Yeah. So, I mean, technically, it is effective. You right. Know? Again, it's a genre of excess. It's like you can't help but be grossed out. You can't help but be aroused or you can't, right. you know, whatever the genre is, melodrama, you can't help but cry. You know, you no, can't. yeah, totally. So I, I think it's kind of impossible to say that you don't like it because if you're grossed out, then you kind of, your body liked it a little bit. Yeah. Like, right? <laughs> yeah. It reached, the, it had the intended reaction. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, of course, like we talked about, the he did The Fly, Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen The Fly? I have. Mm-hmm. Right. That's like, a horrible metamorphosis, um, hybrids, mutations, aberrant sex, zombification, monstrous offspring. These are all examples of body horror. And when I started to think about like, oh, Rosemary's Baby is actually body horror. Like, that's interesting. And mm-hmm. they said that, you know, slasher films technically sort of fit that, but not really, because body horror is not about the initial infliction. It's about like this thing that kind of grows and festers and mm, develops. Yeah. Right. And this movie has that in spades. <laughs> right. I just, because I'm online, I hear people reference like our, our best example of current body hoarder is actually Jackass, where they do all kinds of horror to their bodies for our amusement. And I never thought of it that way, you know, as like, oh, it's lowbrow, but it's high art or whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? So th- that was interesting when I read that tweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I, th- I mean that, that you're not wrong. It's it's that's definitely a variation of like, oh, what can the human body be put through? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like, that, what's its limits? What's cool is that it's body horror in a different genre. It's like body comedy horror. Yes, it's like, like sports. It's, yeah, stunt horror. It's a big body, gladiatorial. Yeah. Like you know, hurt yourself for our amusement. Totally. Um, but they're doing it voluntarily, of course. But yeah, I, yeah, there's something. Um, well, I don't know. One example I was thinking about was like the hills have eyes, which mm-hmm. was like about a family yeah. that was affected by radiation. So again, it's like another kind of like mutated, like we have this, like the symmetry is really important, like to animals and yeah. to people. Like symmetry represents sure. like health. And when you experience asymmetry, it, you, you're kind of like, you shun it. It's like, a, it, or it indicates something is wrong or sick. It's like a real, I don't know. It's just, so it's really about violating this idea of like bodily symmetry or, right. or bodily rightness. And that actually makes me think like, man, there's so much more that could be done in the genre. Like, you know, not enough has been done, I think is what I now think. You know? Sure. Like, I want more body horror, but I want it to be like, I want new stuff. You don't like, so wait. Like, I do, do you like body horror? <laughs> Like what is this? I want to like it, but I don't like. I like in theory, not in practice. Okay. Because yeah. I think in practice it's Cronenberg mostly. Right. You know. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's cool, but that's Cronenberg. Like, I, I we need like it doesn't have to be a female Cronenberg, but like give me a gay Cronenberg. Well, I guess that's kind of like <laughs> that's like Kenneth Anger, I guess. Um, you know what I'm saying though? Like, sure. Just, I, I want like somebody who's gonna have a different perspective. And, yeah. Like the way that. Um, you know, like black horror films, like ones that are centered on black experience, like Get Out, right? Like yeah. that was such an interesting like perspective that could only have come from that kind of a, a writer, you know, who comes mm-hmm. from that kind of a community. And I mean, Canadians are cool too. And Cronenberg <laughs> has the right to make whatever he wants to make. But I, I don't know. I just, I would like to see, could Greta Gerwig make a body horror movie, please? Like that'd be cool. Maybe that's what Barbie is. I don't know. I feel yeah. like... I can't quite judge this movie without... I would have had to see it at the time, I feel like. Because, like, putting a Betamax into your stomach VCR vagina is pretty... <laughs> like, I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, of course. Penetration. But, like, at the time, I bet I would have been, like, you know, like, a little queasy. I would have been like, oh, that's messed up. Yeah. Let's get our letter jackets and get out of here, guys. <laughs> you know? that's just. Can't... I think James Woods, like kind of at one point just said, I'm no longer an actor, I'm just the bearer of this slit. 
because yeah. like everything was about keeping that looking right. Oh, wow. and yeah, we got obviously got a little bit That's funny. felt upstaged by it. I think. Yeah, so it's, like, it's interesting you bring up this, this the body horror and gender and whatnot because it, you know he basically is just getting like continually raped in yeah. his yeah. like makeshift like videotape vagina hole. You know, uh, uh, he uh, uh, kitty. <laughs> She just knocked over the po- picture there. Oh, okay. So, yeah. that's fine. I was going to say that about the body horror, that's interesting that it's almost, how do I put this? It isn't almost entirely Cronenberg just ham fisting it in there because the whole, like the premise diegetically, none of that's real. It's all just hallucination. Right. It's all just what this guy sees or thinks mm. is happening. Right. right. So, And, you know, on a top level, he's like, oh, it's because Cronenberg wanted those scenes in there. But, like, he could have hallucinated anything, but this is what he thinks. He thinks, like, everything's pulsing and coming to life. Mm-hmm. He thinks it's, it's all... Well, it's also, like, we're inside the mind of a pornographer. pornographer so, or, yeah, that yeah, makes so, sense. So it's like, okay, I guess the inside of his mind would look like this but it's like you have to get all the way to the end to kind of like understand all that and in the meantime it's like and even if I do understand that oh it's all in this guy's mind I'm like I don't want to be stuck in some dude's mind for 90 minutes I don't think he wanted to be stuck in there either based on the ending we saw that's true yeah But yeah, that's, blow your brains out. Yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah. it, that's really what it came down to. It's like it's How do very I get out of this. Yeah, it's a sort of bleak. Like in my mind, I'm like he doesn't say anything. But if I were him, it's like you're sitting there and the TV's like you're almost finished. Now yeah. you got to just do this one last thing, and you're yeah. just like oh whatever <laughs> like i'm done all right and it's like we literally just re-watched the thing that he just watched on the tv and then yeah, and then it tedious. just ends which is like the clearest indicator to me that it was like just in his head the way it just because mm-hmm. all of this is his perspective starting right. from like right so story has to end there the very beginning yeah so like he d- we see nothing outside of his perspective and i feel like it's a very sort of bleak like idea that like what if video drummer this higher none of the higher conscious none of that's actually real huh. and the real horrific conclusion is that after all of this mind bending you know you're just you're you're just dead there's nothing he's just it just ends that is that is an interesting take that like he literally is just a guy who watched way too much porn and went crazy and uh, yeah that's that's what i think is the real like i think it's like the Which horror happens, yeah. the real uh, happens, yeah. the real horrific conclusion is mm. that um, even though there were these, like, I think scenes or either it was like, uh, like one of the alternative endings is that like you see him reunited with uh, Deborah Harry and mm-hmm. they're like performing coitus with all these mutated parts and Videodrome and this and that. And it's like, I guess if we wanted to give the audience the message that like there is something real about about this thing. But I love the, the I there's something very sort of uh I liked it more because of how bleak that final thing but, is yeah. that he that he shoots himself and that literally it just cuts to black and there's nothing like it's 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 that soprano style ending of like that's that's you just that's, spoiled the soprano oh no, shit no. Now, how many things can I spoil in I one will, episode that'd be great <laughs> yeah that's funny <laughs> just, get them all out just get them done just bang bang them all out yeah. that is yeah. an interesting take because if even if you do take it somewhat literally that these people are controlling him i think it's even kind of hard to figure out who's controlling what because by the end you have to assume the certain people sent him to be an assassin or wanted him but then brian oblivion's daughter mm-hmm. totally bianca. Fl- bianca totally flips the script and like recontrols this mm-hmm. assassin and yeah. points them back up the, in the other direction and then has him kill himself. So it's, it's at the end. At the end, it's just it's just he he's yeah. just consumed by all of this, and he was like done for from from the get. Felt wrong. I do kind of like that idea of it. Is just that like yeah, this guy just got way too deep. He's just like yeah. The bleak reality is that yeah. he just was taken. He just got yeah. Like he he got um. He just got he got made into a patsy. He got taken advantage of. Whether or not there is this this bigger nefarious entity that's that's spreading its right. that's that's spreading its seed because of him or not. Um, 
he uh you know honestly he, that's he, the part that felt a little bit like network to me was like discovering the higher powers of yeah like, very media. very network and also too like mm. very prevalent or very prescient in light of you know things you see mass shooters consuming and and getting you know, people getting worked up on on the internet and yeah, yeah whatever it's yeah far too common <laughs> i say whatever now. but you know what i mean no like, no I, just, I mean i think it, you I don't know, have the bandwidth here i think there there is thoughtfulness and there's media theory at work in this in fact like um i learned that marshall McLuhan, who i guess was a was a pretty big like theorist in media and academia was right. teaching at the University of Toronto when David Cronenberg was a student there. So I don't know if he took a class with him or what, but he is basically the the Brian Oblivion character is pretty much modeled on this guy. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So I mean it does have like some it has some legitimacy, you know? It's just it kind of feels like, you know, college dude who like, oh, you got like half right or you're halfway to being for this to be good for me. Right. <laughs> so, I get what I you think, mean. I think that's just the 80s. I Maybe think that's you're what, right. Because that's how I react to the 80s. It's just like, wow, they think they're so cool and on top of the world. <laughs> and then well, time goes on. So I think like that's a right. product of the time. It could be. I but mean, I also, very funny. I'm also with you that it's it's short enough and it's ambiguous enough that it doesn't really have to explain itself too much. No. No, it's good. Less is more in the right ways. It does feel a little too jumbled earlier on because it's like mm -hmm. there's just not enough. Like the exposition does not feel tethered in any way, which like also just makes me think, oh, well, then you can make an argument that everything's in his head. Right. No, it <laughs> was all a dream. Oh, yeah. none no. of it. None of it was ever real. He was always just in front of this TV or whatever. And mm -hmm. I well, feel like I, that is a good, maybe better theme or approach is like, as opposed to there are forces that are trying to control us and they will use this technology, but rather like you're already ruining your own brain with technology. You're already going crazy. Rot. If you're not careful, anybody can fall off the deep end. Because mm -hmm. if that's your entire reality, it's yeah. this, the, what you're consuming. And, yeah. and he you thought know. he was so jaded that he would never find video that would like ruin him right because he right. thought he, he was mm -hmm. a curator he's like i gotta get this for mm -hmm. my fans he never thought he would become the like victim of his own mm -hmm. apparatus whatever right mm -hmm. yeah and cronenberg himself is pretty fascinated with like people who are fascinated by dark things like yeah which is very yeah mm, there's a few layers to that um I have a couple of reviews here, if okay. you don't mind. Never coherent and frequently pretentious, the film remains an <laughs> audacious attempt to place obsessive personal images before a popular audience, a kind of Kenneth Anger version of Star Wars. That was the Chicago Reader. It has nothing to do with Star Wars. I got to get through these, man. <laughs> uh, the characters, this is just Roger Ebert, the characters are bitter and hateful, the image is nauseating, and the ending is bleak enough that when the screen fades to black, it's relief. One of the least entertaining <laughs> films of all time. Uh -huh. Variety said, and it's getting a little better, the film is dotted with video jargon and ideology that proves far more fascinating than distancing. And finally, Janet Maslin from the New York Times. The video drum finally grows grotesque and a little confused. Uh, it begins very well and sustains its cleverness for a long time. Would you watch this again, Chelsea? Um, no, but if it was on, it would probably catch my eye. You'd be like, oh, this I know this. This is something I would easily, like before I saw like the study and public house on, on Vermont are closed. I don't know what's going on with those, but this definitely seemed like the kind of movie that would play in the background uh, of the study. Cause they, well, I, they, they would play shit like uh, Hellraiser in there sometimes. <laughs> like we can talk about body <laughs> horror. Um, that this very much felt like a, this feels like something that would like distract me at a bar, but not something I would probably readily Put, I put like on I, again. If I saw it in a bar, I would be drunkenly telling everybody around me why this movie sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a conversation piece, to be sure. Totally. I to feel be sure. the would need to go to bat for this movie and just say it's like 90 minutes long. So no matter how much you hate it, it's there's not another hour to get mad at it. Kind of like No, it, it is a quick watch, although the, like it is so disjointed that it can be hard to follow what's happening. It had that very sort of... Um, like Thomas Pynchon type of like crying of lot 49. There's like, there's very like things that don't seem to go anywhere or like he's just going in circles. And then one thing, it means something else. It's like this, it's, just, it's, it's a lot of him just keeps yeah. getting, no, he went that way. No, he went that way. But, <laughs> but um, not as funny. 
Um, <laughs> so uh, that's that. All right. Well, all right. Um, any final thought from you, Mike? Um, long live the new flesh. I, I want to know what new flesh means, but long live I guess it. I guess on a literal sense, on a metal level, he says that, then the movie ends, and then the idea is then you take, if it's a video, which it would have been at the time, then you take, uh, this is the flesh, then you, you take, take the tape out. out. Yeah. Oh, Whoa. look at that. This is just the flesh. I've just been indoctrinated, and now I must make this, everyone else watch it, right, I guess, yeah. I, I think maybe this movie had to be on a VHS tape to be experienced, or a beta tape, actually, yeah. Betamax. Um, Mike Sally Farber, thank you for sitting in with us this yes, week. Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you so it much. It's yeah. so nice to have another voice in the room. Delightful. Yeah, and uh, if you like us and this show, please leave us a review on Apple yeah. Podcasts. Yeah, we, yeah, 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 Like, we need more. Give please. us more. Uh, you can also follow us on social media at long, Fresh Movie Pod. Long live breath of fresh movie. <laughs> long live the new fresh. Long live the new fresh. <laughs> <laughs>